Hey everyone, it's the middle of December here in Ohio. Uh, weather's still pretty mild. It was like 60 yesterday. But uh, by the end of the day, it's supposed to get back down to normal, down into the 30s here. Uh, have made some changes around. We put a uh, 12 by 36 addition on the front of our machinery shed. Uh, just needed some more room for storage and fish stuff and goat pens and stuff like that there. Uh, big addition we just made was we, we bought a uh, 5kw two-cylinder diesel generator military surplus online auction pretty sweet it's 30 years old but it's only got 200 hours on it runs and works like a new one uh, it is a new one it's 30 year old new piece of equipment sitting there uh, pretty good deal something to keep the fish warm when it gets cold out if the power goes out eh, I'm going to a new addition here it's completely unfinished just stuff sitting everywhere uh, I just brought you in here because I wanted to show you my filter closet room I built a uh, I wanted to get the filters out of uh, the main room over there main fish room so just in that little insulated closet here with a steel man door and uh, got all the filters in here. It's kind of a complex system, but uh, works pretty well. Got uh, one horsepower pump still in the other room. Coming through the line, coming through the wall, two inch line feeding the 16 inch Hayward pool filter. Uh, I did get the sand out of there. There's no sand anymore. I found some uh, ceramic sinking beads online and uh, that worked out really well. No, no plumbing changes inside the filter necessary at all. Uh, line goes up, splits off. I did put a uh, just a little UV light in there. See the light down there in my hand. That helped the water quality quite a bit. Goes back up, back in the main line. Feeds the bottom into the bottom of these two half barrels sitting up here on top of the stand. And in each one of the barrels, I've got 50 liters of K1 plastic media in there. And uh, it's being agitated by a 40 watt air pump. And from there, I just got a one inch PEX lines, uh, one for each tank on the other side of the room. I got one line for, for every tank in the room. I'm going back over gravity feeding the other side of the room, all the tanks. Got rid of all the manifold lines in there, all the valves. Uh, it's just too inconsistent. Just uh, never did work right from one day to the next. So I figured this was going to be the best way just to go, go from a big volume of water uh, with a dedicated line right to each tank. Works out real nice. Size of the line dictates what the flow is to each tank. No valves necessary. Uh, fish feed storage, just got five different sizes of Aquamax in there. This is my next next filter project right here. I had this stuff donated to me here a week or so ago. This is what they call structured media. These pieces are, are really lightweight. Just, just, uh, it's just honeycombed with thousands of passageways. And each passageway goes two different directions. And within that, each one of those passageways, there's a different tube going off of each passage. There's just like literally thousands of different passageways down through that piece. Uh, 
this is what they use in uh, uh, industrial applications for uh, cleaning up water. Uh, they use them in cooling towers. All these big electrical cooling towers are just filled with this stuff. And the water just cascades down through it to cool it and filter it. Just debating on whether to build like four individual boxes or just build one big box and put put it all in one box. Might be simpler. It's going to weigh literally a ton if I do that though. Uh, Pretty much basically the same setup. I mean, I haven't changed the arrangement in here at all. I think my lens is fogging up. Hang on a That's a little better. Still got six tanks. We're on the right hand side. Still got the same glass tank down the left side. Still keeps swallowing up on my lens. Too much heat out of the cold. Here's all those uh, one inch gravity lines coming from the other side. Going right down, clear down to the end of the room, around that side back up this side, one drop into each tank, here you can see where I drop, drop down into the tank, there, one of those in each tank, and I did have my filter, I got some new uh, feeders, some bigger feeders, I did just have them sitting on top of the tanks, but uh, every time it, they worked, the, the fish would hit the feed so hard that it would splash, splash water up into the chute here. And then the feed would get wet and they'd plug up. So I had to get them up high and dry. So I just uh, put a piece of downspout from each feeder down in the tank. Just got that done last night, matter of fact. Uh, got, got six blues in the tank here, uh, two males and four females, and uh, believe it or not, all four females are, are sucking on eggs right now, so here in another week or so, we ought to have a boatload of new fry to deal with. Uh, I bought 100 fingerlings from Edgar down in Florida, they're, they're the hybrids all male hybrids and uh, they're pretty pretty interesting they, I don't know if you can see it or not but the the uh, body size on these guys is pretty big compared to the blues so they ought to be interesting we kind of like them enough that we've actually ordered uh, a colony of breeders from Edgar they should be here first of the next week. That's, that's why I've got the 90 gallon tank all emptied out here. Here's, here's the other 100 or the other 50 back in here. Uh, upper tank, same deal. Got them full of duckweed growing. We feed them uh, a whole handful of duckweed in each tank every night. That's how fast the duckweed reproduces is the tanks we got going here. And uh, they they like it pretty well. They they don't have a problem eating a handful of duckweed every night. Uh, and the other only about the only other thing going on here, uh, Daniel. This is for you. I know you bought one of these seeded sieves, and uh, this is how I cure my overflow problem, water bypass problem. I just switch cheese the bottom corner. of the thing with quarter inch holes for the water that uh, bypasses the sieve right there. It runs down in the corner and then we're, 
runs right into the quarter inch holes, right, right down into the uh, back into the system. You just got to be careful when you drill through. There's not there's like a double wall there, and you definitely don't want to drill through the second wall. But uh, no problem. Just be careful just drilling through that first wall. I just switch keys both corners, and it catches 95% of the water. There's, there's very little water now that runs down the drain. That pile two there, I just cleaned this thing out 15 minutes ago before I started this video. That's how much this thing has stood out in 15 minutes. I, I don't think I could do this if it weren't for this piece right here. Anyway, I think uh, I think that's about it for this time around. Merry Christmas. See you later. Oh, there is one other thing <laughs> I wanted to tell you. Uh, I got a springtime project in mind right now, too. Uh, I think I'm going to bring some of these fish outside in the spring, and I think I'm going to do it the easy way. I'm just going to go to Tractor Supply and uh, get, they got a 1,550 gallon tank at Tractor Supply for about $800, 775 and I'm going to set one or two of those tanks right outside this wall so I can plumb out to them. That's why I'm that's why I'm planning on this new big biofilter out of this stuff right here. So There again, see you later.